<laughs> Can't get better than that. That was amazing. Yeah, it was really cool. What'd you think? Yeah, it How's it perfect. look? Yeah, can't get better than that. It looked like a perfect release, and uh, yeah, it looks like capsule behaved as expected. That's so great to hear. Um, so I think we are gonna try and take a couple more questions from from social, um, and then maybe possibly see a replay of of this drop. Um, let's see. So let, um, we have so many questions from social coming in. Uh, Jacob, uh, how high was Orion dropped from today? So Orion was dropped uh, about seven feet in the air. Uh, so not a whole lot of height, but plenty enough to get some good speed into the water and uh, make a nice splash like we saw today. Awesome. Um, and Debbie, we've got lots of yeah, questions for sure. Debbie. Not sure, what's up? <laughs> um, so what other tests, uh, what other tests are there? Is this, what's this test particularly used for? Okay, so yeah, this test is very specifically used for our structural uh, verification and qualification. So as I mentioned, it's an exact duplicate of our flight design. And so that's the primary uh, reason for doing all of these different water drop tests is to make sure that we've uh, predicted our loads accurately and that the margins that we have in the vehicle are actually in the flight vehicle that we have built. So um, there's a whole lot of other testing that goes into building a spacecraft. So when you talk about the actual flight vehicles with all of the instrumentation and equipment that's installed, we do lots of uh, thermal cycle testing, thermal vacuum testing, vibration testing. Every component that goes in the vehicle goes through its own test program. And then the vehicle as a whole goes through a very elaborate test program where we do a thermal cycle, thermal vacuum, EMI, EMC. So the, the flight units and the flight vehicles are, are very well rung out before we fly to make sure everything will work properly in the very harsh environments of space that it'll be operating in. Oh wow, that's amazing. So we've got a couple questions about um, parachutes. So are, are there going to be parachutes on, on Orion and how many parachutes will there be when it lands? Okay, it actually, when it actually lands, it lands under three main parachutes, but um, it actually could, can land sufficiently under two. So it's one of our systems that has a lot of redundancy and safety built into it because it is a safety critical system. There are a series of parachutes that deploy as the crew module enters the atmosphere and to slow it down. Um, and as far as testing, the parachutes have actually completed their entire test program. So there were um, dozens and dozens of drops of test articles and what we call lawn darts and other items out the back of airplanes looking at every possible uh, permutation of that parachute system. So you want to make sure if you had only one, two drogues open or only one uh, or only two main parachutes open that you could actually, the crew would be able to survive any kind of anomaly event. And um, testing all sorts of wind speeds and um, other parameters you have to test to make sure your parachute system is complete. So ours is actually finished certification. It's installed in the, the vehicle and ready to go. That's awesome. Um, so. How many uh, drops have been done on Orion um, and, ooh, sorry, <laughs> wrong question. Um, is Orion going to carry astronauts to the moon um, or Mars and how many crew can it hold? Okay. Um, yeah, in fact, that's exactly what Orion is designed to do. It's designed to carry um, uh, crew members to the, the lunar vicinity. And um, right now, uh, the current module will hold four crew members for up to 21 days of active use. 
It's about 200 days of quiescent use. So if the crew left the the, art, the Orion vehicle and went into say like a gateway or a space station orbiting the moon, uh, the vehicle is fine in a quiescent mode for up to 200 days. So um, yes, definitely designed exactly what it's designed for to take crew members to and from uh, the lunar vicinity. Now to the lunar surface, you're talking about a lander or something else. The, the Orion vehicle itself does not actually go to the surface of the moon. You'd have a lander that would take your crew members. And I think the, the architecture for Mars is, is still being discussed on what kind of transport vehicle you would need. Um, certainly some additional support services for a mission of that duration. Very cool. Um, so will there be future Orion tests uh, done at a higher height? Um, yeah, there are more tests planned as a part of this sequence. Jacob, you want to talk about the, the next few tests coming up? Sure. So uh, we are going to do one more straight drop test uh, at this test facility. Uh, we'll lift it up uh, much higher than this test here, uh, really to exercise the capsule as it impacts the water. And then we're also going to be doing a swing test where we'll actually pull the vehicle back towards the east end of the test facility and allow it to swing into the water. So we'll have a combination of both horizontal and vertical velocity. So yeah, we, I think we have two more tests planned for this uh, test article here. Right, because this is the second of, of four yes. for, this, for yeah. this crew module. Um, and do you know how many sensors are on this Orion test vehicle? So yeah, we have 500 different sensors on this test vehicle, and they are a combination of strain gauges, accelerometers and rotational oh. rate sensors uh, distributed throughout the test article. Wow, that's awesome. And we actually have a special guest with us, um, our, <laughs> our center director um, is here and he actually brought us something to show. Um, if we want to come over here.